Mumbai The land of opportunities the economic capital of India a home already to 10 million people and yet every day it sees an influx of thousands from all over the country one of the most densely populated cities Mumbai also has one of the highest real estate prices in the world even more premium than gold yet 55% of this potential gold mine is covered with slums simply waiting to metamorphose to see the light of a new tomorrow one such slum in the heart of Mumbai will see itself transformed into a legendary structure a structure so iconic that it will set the benchmark not only for today but for a long time to come Ahuja Towers the making the project Ahuja Tower it began in 2004 with the visiting the plot and having a first look at it having the first look at it you see the mammoth of the humanity occupying the slum which would give creeps to anybody but here we found the location was really premium needless to say getting the slum dwellers to give up their homes and settle in the transit apartments until the actual building is built is by all means a Herculean task and there was only one way to do this create a strong trust factor how do you win over the trust factor is to show them first giving that's what we have done in this project by offering them the transit apartments which were far better than the normal other transit apartments. and true to their word the Ahuja group provided the slum dwellers with apartments far superior to what is usually given by other builders in an SRA scheme finally a government approved land with an absolutely clear title was obtained and that too in an ultra premium location and another main key thing was that there was infrastructure like the ceiling being uh, linked to it and to uh, to have a special location like this you should complement it with a extraordinary structure to build an extraordinary structure one needs an extraordinary team which is not only world class but also has a good understanding of Indian conditions. From the word the go, we told the architect that this project has to be no compromise. You have to go for the best and whatever, whether it is whichever part of the world, we will go and source it, we will go and find it, whether it's in terms of design or it's in terms of material. Uh, when we visited the site, we, we, we went to an existing building uh, very near the site. And the first thing that uh, we went up to the rooftop and we, we saw from the existing building is that there are boats uh, near uh, the coast of Mumbai. And those boats were, were having sails. And uh, from that, we decided to uh, uh, take inspiration from the boats and to have uh, uh, the sail right at the top of the building. As the building is very tall, that would be very iconic. When you're doing a tall building of uh, this size, and if you enclose it with a brick wall or with block work, then the whole purpose of going tall is defeated. 
it was clear from beginning if we are going tall and we are doing these size of apartments we are doing this kind of height we have to enclose it with glass so that we get a full sea view we get a full city view and we get enough light coming in the sad the name itself is a, is a face of the building so which is face of the building is obviously you give a lot of importance because there's a impression of your entire development class chosen for this particular project is called high performance double glazed unit so which is actually insulated glass unit you are insulating one uh, layer to another layer it's called insulated glass unit the f obvious first uh, benefit is is cut down a lot of heat coming into the building and uh, furthermore it give, the glass is comply with the international safety and security in terms of uh, protecting the occupants from inside to outside to make the building look taller sleeker and more iconic a cleft has been designed in the middle of the building the cleft also facilitates more open view thus providing an unhindered 270 degree view to each apartment advanced cleaning systems like davitam have been incorporated to make the cleaning of glass very convenient thus always ensuring a clear view normally people are able to give not more than 20% of the outside view compared to their uh, interior here we have given almost 100% of the view inside for any building the most important part of building is the foundation and as we go high and high foundation becomes more important so in this case particularly our building what we are doing is we are having a 4 feet diameter piles which is going up to say 13 to 14 meters in the ground and in the rock minimum 5 meters and total number of piles are 300 and on that particular pile we are having a 3.25 in feet you can say one story high 10 10 11 feet high raft we are constructing and on top of that we are having two or two and two and a half feet wide walls we are having and on that basic building is going to be supported for any structural design there are two major aspects one is a earthquake and second is a wind up to 30 story building earthquake become a predominant force and for a design earthquake is a important criteria but when you go above 30 story wind becomes a predominant force and now we have to design a building for a wind at such heights the wind forces that act on the building cause it to deflect as well as accelerate thus making the residents on the upper floors to feel motion sickness or nausea to counter this the design peer review team suggested a process known as the wind tunnel test a scaled model of the structure and all buildings in a vicinity of 500 meters were subjected to winds recorded in the city over the last 50 years and the strength of the structure was checked the results from these tests were then analyzed for further design to keep the deflection within reasonable limits the 25th and the 41st floors of the building will be strengthened with concrete belts called as belt truss and the same would not only meet but also surpass the set stringent standards uh, in this project uh, our approach was slightly different uh, where what we did we we changed uh, seats with the customer uh, we we thought let's think from the customer's point of view what would he want what played a large part in the design obviously is the indian culture the extended family um daily life of india um and really reflecting the luxury that we can pull into that but keeping in mind that there's extended family what would be my wish list if i was uh, uh, you know wanting the best of the things and i would want to be pampered let me think everything from the customer's point of view speaking to the luxury uh that we're talking about you have a private elevator that brings you directly up to your living room um you empty out right into an entry foyer right into the living room area um we've got four bedrooms in each of the apartments the largest being the master bedroom our master bedroom has the, all the appointments of a large master bath floating bathtub double vanities um separate shower all the materials that we're using are imported marbles um from Europe and around the rest of the part of the world uh custom millwork 
uh, for each of the bathrooms and each of the units. In the master um, bedroom, we've got a large walk-in closet dressing room. Uh, really for his and hers, it's large enough with a center island for folding and storing, but it's the equivalent really of a small bedroom. Uh, then we've got a second bedroom that's sort of one step down in size from the master, um, where we would have probably one of the children be living in that room, one of the older children of the residents. Uh, at the far side of the apartment is where we have our bedroom for the in-law, the extended family member that would be living at the apartment. Uh, the fourth bedroom, we've actually made that flexible and plan. It can be a study. Uh, it's really flexible planning study or a fourth bedroom. Um, we've got uh, a library, a separate library in the apartment. Um, the quintessential sort of Indian dining room uh, where you eat family style and the dry and the wet kitchen. To retain an old world charm inside the apartments, the internal height has been kept at 14 feet about 40% more than what is found in any of the recent constructions. The apartments have been provided with separate entrances for domestic help and also a separate room marked for the mechanical and electrical services, thus enhancing the privacy of the occupants. The amount of thought put in while designing is very well evident in the viewing decks that have been provided, specially designed for people with a fear of heights or vertigo so as to limit their vertical angle of viewing. It's just one of the many brilliant features that have been incorporated. The luxury in Ahuja Towers begins as soon as one enters the building premises. Moving further into the lobby, there are services like a covered drop-off and valet. The grand lobby also houses a concierge desk that arranges for everything that one needs in the city, right from movie tickets to hotel reservations. Right behind the um, reception desk, our concierge, we have a two-story waterfall that creates a very, very soothing, trickling sound of water. While it's artistic in shape and form, the subtle sound of that water really creates a very calming effect. It serves the other purpose of cooling the space, which is more of a practical uh, tool, but at the same time, it's really very, very effective. As one moves up from the lobby, there are a host of five-star amenities for the residents to be enjoyed. The 41st floor is the business section, wherein there are three conference rooms. This facility basically is that you want to hold an impromptu meeting and uh, you can't get out to your office because the office is closed or it's too far away. So you do the meeting in, in the building itself without disturbing your family. Generally in India, a normal uh, project, which would be a residential project, uh, the plumbing and electrical and mechanical services would come under the scope of the architect. Uh, but in a hotel project, it would not be the case because the services are very large. So we felt this was reaching almost as good as a hotel project. So we needed a specialized MEP consultant. Now, Ahoja Towers is one of the premium apartment uh, residential buildings which is coming up probably in India. Now, these kind of systems which we plan for uh, Ahuja Towers are not normally done for any residential buildings. These are normally done for commercial buildings like uh, hotels, hospitals and those kind of high-end commercial buildings where we need all these systems and services. General security environment has gone bad in the world. Therefore, the security systems had to be looked into at a different uh, perspective, unlike what we had been doing earlier. Number one is the normal security environment. Number two, the 
the profile of the clientele or the profile of the buyer or the user of this property, both of them need that kind of a high-end security systems, which is equal to any kind of a high-end security systems which have been provided in an institutional building of that high security nature. So I can say that without any hesitation that this project, the security systems in this project is one of the topmost for any kind of a residential buildings. The security at Ahuja Towers is mainly divided into three categories. Access control systems, intrusion alarms and surveillance systems. So the entire property has been very well covered in all these three angles, access control, intrusion alarm and surveillance. And again, all these systems are IP, digital IP based, computerized systems. So it's a, it's a Ethernet uh, data networks which is connecting the entire security network. Top, top notch, high end. Going green, two reasons, uh, two very simple reasons. Sustainability, which is over the long term period, we want something which will uh, not impact the environment. And second, which is a very logical reason, uh, is it's user friendly. You're ultimately uh, having low cost of running. So if the user sees it from his point of view, he's got low running expenditure, low on maintenance. So these were two major reasons why we felt that going green was necessary. And in tomorrow's day and age, you have to make buildings which are green. Uh, the brief that I received from the client was that they wanted to go in for a building, which was a green building, a building that had a minimum negative impact on the environment during construction as well as after construction. And this is very, very critical today when you see, uh, you know, the energy uh, conservation, which is one of the needs of the hour and resource efficiency. Lead which is one of the most comprehensive benchmarking systems that exists today, has prescribed a set of measures for making a building green. In fact, Ahuja Towers is aiming for a gold certification from LEED, which is absolutely rare for a residential project. It takes a lot of commitment to go in for a LEED rating that to a gold certification for a high-rise apartment. In fact, to the best of my knowledge, this is the only building in India which is a residential building, a high-rise building and which is going in for a, for a LEED rating. And when we talk about a gold-rated building, we are actually talking about the top 10% of uh, green buildings in the world. To achieve the gold certification, Ahuja Towers will have to address green issues under five categories. Site selection, water conservation, water efficiency, energy conservation, and material selection. Under site selection, uh, we have made sure that we choose a site which is an appropriate site. We have made sure that uh, we are harvesting a lot of the storm water, and whatever storm water we are letting into the system, we are filtering it. The storm water drain lines along the plot boundary collect rain water from the ground and terraces, specially constructed recharging pits in turn recharge the ground water level. Under water efficiency, we have ensured that we choose plumbing fixtures which are very, very efficient and we have a sewage treatment plant in place where we treat the water and reuse this treated water to meet part of our landscape irrigation requirements. And under energy, we have a very, very efficient uh, basic design where we have used a high performance glass where we have a VRV based uh, system which is a very efficient system. Unlike other air conditioning systems, the VRV system allows the residents to choose the spaces to be cooled on the basis of occupancy or need. This reduces the overall load on the system and hence reduces power consumption. So it consumes very less electricity while delivering a high quality of cooling. The other feature that we have in Ahuja Towers is that we have sensor-based lighting so that uh, the lighting systems only come on 
only when there is somebody who is moving in that particular space and that by itself is going to help us save a substantial amount of energy then for materials we have made sure that at least a certain percentage of materials have a recycled content to them and while doing all